What's up? Hey guys, it's Ivan. In this video, I want to show you how to conditionally show additional form fields depending on your drop down choices in your unbounds form. So, just to illustrate, it's going to look something like this, where if you select, say, Canucks, it asks you what are your favorite things about Canucks. And then you go Canadians, it's asking you what do you like about the Canadians. So, customized messages depending on your drop down choices. It can also look something a little more complicated where there are more options below and if you choose something it just scrolls down okay do you like baseball do you like hockey and it starts like that so we're gonna get to it we're going to use this page that we use for oral our unbounced testing and let's get let's get started so um, the first thing you have to do is add a form now as you can see here I can't add a form that's because in Unbalance, there's a limit of one form per page, and we already have it here. So if you don't have a form, simply drag it. If you do, double click it, and you can optimize it, okay? So let's suppose I don't have anything in this form. What you would do is drag whatever you need, or not drag, you just click on it, actually. Um, and then just go like that. So say first name and email is what we need. You can make it uh, required if you want to and validate the email address um, and now we need to add the drop down okay so you can create a custom drop down menu where as you saw it asked custom questions or specific ones I'm going to go with custom because that's the the general thing that you can optimize uh, but if you want any one of these options are pretty pretty much set so I'll go with custom now you can name it so let's say we can ask what type of food do you like and then this is the field name okay so we can auto generate so that's like the ID of this specific box so it can be auto generated or you can name it whatever you want to auto generate is fine you know that sounds fine to me so we're gonna leave it at that so now we have to add some choices um, now if you wanted to start looking like a blank with a blank like this rather than starting with something like this then you have to add a blank as a first choice and say it's not a valid value okay so over here we can say pizza we can say hamburger oh my god I can't spell today and then let's make one more just so I can show you that it doesn't have to be two um, of course everyone loves broccoli I think that's how you spell it so that's that okay so now you should have three choices when you click on the drop down and you can click save and we may have to move this one down a little bit so that there's space let me maybe let me delete that make this a little bigger just in case we want to customize it even more and then add that here somewhere like that looking for the green line there so it matches and that's pretty much it so what do we do from here so now that we've created the form now we have to add the code so the code is this one uh, let me just make sure that's the right looks right so we're gonna copy everything everything here copy that go back to our page oops let's use this one and let's create a new JavaScript so let's name this conditional form fields and paste it here so I don't know what half of this code means don't ask me but the only thing you change are these things here okay so if you have a box for example that holds this so a box remember check out my video on how to add subsections if you have a subsection that's holding this you will need to add oops that ID here okay if you don't then just leave it so right off the bat we're going to follow instructions it says just leave it blank if there's nothing and again we don't have anything that this is put in right it's not put into a container so we're gonna do that and now we have to just go through this and fill in the blanks so we have to put in the ID of the submit button so let's do that so we click the button we scroll down now we have to copy it manually you can't control C because it takes you to the whole thing there well try it out and we change this to our button there you go now we need to change the ID of the drop-down field so what's the exact field that you want 
to be to alter your future um, your future boxes and that's where this comes in this one right there so you can copy that cancel go back here and just simply put it here just replace it okay now number of fields to show or hide so we have three right not including the blank one we have three uh, don't worry about this for now we'll get to this when you want to do something like that where you have also options after the drop down okay so don't worry about it for now so let's just see what this is going to look like let's click save and preview so it's asking what type of food do you like pizza oh okay so we have that that's perfect but we don't have um, the actual answers yet okay so we have to do that so let's quickly do that so we're gonna select this again and we're going to add a regular text field now you can enter multi-line where it's you know it gives you a bit more space or a single line or just something as simple as that so now we are gonna need three right one for each of those like why do you like broccoli why do you like pizza or whatever you want so let's go with multi we can reduce the height of the box to maybe two it doesn't have to be that big and let's ask uh, so for the first one what was the first one pizza hamburger broccoli uh, so let's say what type of pizza do you like best we can leave that um, you can select if you want it to be required or not but we'll leave it at that create another multi-line again make it two um, this one what was the second one hamburger where do you buy hamburgers from and then let's add another one to this one who in their right mind likes broccoli okay so this is a very important question you have to ask this question whenever you're doing anything that has to do with broccoli okay so very important so now that we've done that uh, we can click done and move this to the bottom and now let's see what's going to happen so now that we've added all the actual answers let's see what this looks like so that's at the bottom so let's select pizza okay so we know that this works pizza right hamburgers broccoli so we got that to work which is perfect uh, we have to work with this little button though so what we can do here is move the button up to right there and now we can click save and now as you can see the button is here but if you select an option the button does move down okay so you can do that and that's I mean that's pretty much the most basic thing you need um, if you want to add additional options here you can but that's where that variable button comes in so maybe let's um, can drop that down a little bit that's where this variable number comes in is that you want to uh, increase or decrease the space between uh, those other drop, uh, drop down options and this one okay so let's suppose we add some more so let's click here um, I think yeah it's not gonna do that so let's see so let's say you want to ask age right so we're gonna ask age here and phone number so that's fine but we do have to work with this now as well so if you're adding additional options below the drop down you also have to work with the button so it's kind of a hit or miss you have to keep adding the button and then saving and previewing to see what it looks like um, but I'm trying to think if we're missing anything yeah so let's just see what this looks like you, you have to before um, I show you what that variable count option is so we've done that um, yeah so as you can see the buttons not there so we have to move it a little bit more down and then that's where the variable button comes in is that it bridges this gap okay so it's still going to move fine oh, look, lag a little bit um, but there is a bit of a gap there so let's go back and edit So that's where this variable count comes in so by default it's 27 so the more you put the higher the number the lower the distance okay the shorter the distance so if we make this 40 for instance and we click save you will see that now there is less of the space between 
the drop down and the other options you set. So there's a little bit more uh, less space here in between these. Okay, so we have to keep going. Um, I don't know what we want to do. Maybe 50, 55. Let's try that. Click done. Save. So you will have to do this. You will have to go back and forth because unfortunately with code and unbounce, you can't see everything live. You have to save and then go see. So this is a bit better. As you can see, there's less space. Um, and as you add it, you know, it uh, works pretty well. So I think this looks pretty good. Um, pretty accurate. Now with the button, we just want to lower it a little bit further. So maybe something like that, that should look good. And now as we click preview, oh, give it a second. There you go. So the button's there, everything works, and we've just created our conditional uh, drop down. So that's all I wanted to show you guys in this video. If you enjoyed this one, check out my Google Ads playlist where I teach you how to create Google Ads to send traffic here, and my Unbounce playlist so you can see how to create websites from, or this landing page from scratch. Um, I also have an Unbounce 14 day free trial link in the description. If you use my link, you get 14 free days plus 20% off for your first three months. So a really huge savings if you use my link. Obviously, I get a commission, but it's, it's a good deal both ways. And I hope all this was valuable for you. So thank you so much for watching. I will see you in the next video.